What's up divers? In today's video, we're gonna be covering things scuba divers do wrong. So let's get to it. Thanks for joining us on our channel, Azul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and I'm here to tell you that I have personally done just about all of the things that I'm going to cover right now. Things scuba divers do wrong. This video is here to help you, not shame you. We all go through growing pains while learning how to scuba dive, and anyone that makes fun of you for it is a douche. That being said, we shouldn't keep making the same mistakes. All right, so let's learn some stuff today. Our sponsor for today's video is a company called Dive Proof. Dive Proof is a female owned small business making waterproof log books based in the UK. Stay through to the end of the video to find out more information about this company and get a sweet discount code. Number one, too much weight. As beginner divers, we get really used to being overweighted, probably because our instructors put a crap ton of weight in our BCD just to get us on our knees in the sand so that we would do our skills. The problem is they probably never taught you proper buoyancy. What happens with being overweighted? Your body position will suffer, especially if you have all of your weight on your weight belt, then it's gonna drag down your lower body and result in a very telling body position, which we like to lovingly refer to as the seahorse. That means your fins are down here and your head is up here. This is not great because not only do you have a lot of drag, right? There's a lot of the front of your body facing the water that you're encountering. So it's not an efficient body position. Uh, but also if you happen to kick in this position, there are two things that happen. One, you have a chance of touching things along the reef, which is a big no-no. Number two, if you're kicking in this body position, where are you gonna end up going? up to the surface. That's why when we have new divers and you know, new divers do tend to have that position for a little while because a trim, horizontal trim can be challenging for a lot of people. What we tell them is if you do happen to notice that you're going up, just relax, stop finning, exhale, and then continue on. What else happens when you're diving overweighted? Your air consumption suffers. Just like on land, if you are carrying around a bunch of extra weight, you're not going to be very efficient. And with that, underwater, your buoyancy is going to be more difficult. And that means that you'll be inflating and deflating your BCD all the time, which is another waste of air. And that can also be a safety factor if you happen to inflate your BCD too much and you go up to the surface. The solution for this, you wanna do a weight check at the surface, at the beginning of the dive. This is also called a buoyancy check. The way that you do that is you have all of your weight in place, you have your mask and regulator on, you take a big inhale and you hold the breath deflate your BCD completely, completely deflate your BCD while you're holding that inhale. And what should happen is you should sink to around eye level with that held inhale. With the exhale, you should be able to go down. Now this isn't a perfect system, so you should definitely check at the end of the dive when you're low on air that you're able to still do a safety stop comfortably with the weight that you have. My recommendation is that you should go with someone who is more experienced and can carry extra weight for you so that you can really test and see what your optimum weight is. Number two, bicycle kicking. This is very prevalent among those seahorse divers. What happens here is basically you are riding a bicycle. You have your fins, but you're not actually using them and you're just moving your knees trying to get yourself forward, but you're not using the efficiency of the fins at all. This is really common in Discover Scuba Divers and brand new divers because being in the water is foreign for a lot of people. It's not like a common sense sort of thing to understand how to swim with fins. So if you wanna be able to go diving without somebody holding on to the back of your tank and helping you around, then you need to learn different finning techniques. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. 
All right, number three on our list is bad weight distribution. I've already mentioned the ideal position, which is a horizontal trim when we're scuba diving. And something that helps us achieve that horizontal trim is weight placement on our body. What beginners aren't taught is that there are a lot of other places where we can put weight. So besides the weight belt, a lot of BCDs also have trim pockets. Those are typically around the tank or higher up on the back, and these are not quick release. So you don't wanna put a lot of weight in those pockets, but if you're just adding a couple of pounds here or there, that's perfectly fine. You just always wanna have the majority of your weight on something that has a quick release that you can get rid of in case of emergency. Another funny thing that we've encountered with people who only put weight on their weight belts is the culo carpeta phenomenon. <laughs> I wasn't familiar with this uh, phrase until a couple of years ago, but basically for those of you that have kind of no butt, <laughs> it's culo carpeta, it's like folder butt <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> but basically it's, it's, you know, you don't have that curve of your tush. That means that a weight belt worn just above your butt uh, will tend to fall off, like slip off if you put too much weight on it. So especially for those of you that have the culo carpeta, you want to make sure that you have good weight distribution. Now, number four, poor equipment choice and or maintenance. A lot of times new divers will go out and buy all of their new equipment and they'll take it and they have all the knickknacks and everything and they end up just having a bad time because it's too much. There's too much going on for you. Now, because all of us do have to go through buying new equipment, figuring out how to use it, just be mindful of what you're going out to do when you are jumping in with equipment you're not familiar with. You always wanna start out with something that's a little bit more relaxed, a super easy dive, maybe with an instructor or dive master who can help you out. These will make your life a lot easier. And speaking about maintenance, this is probably the one that I'm most guilty of, but all of us should keep really well-maintained equipment. Our equipment is designed to be really reliable, but only if we take care of it. So just do it. Take your gear regularly for servicing. Finally, number five, being a know-it-all. For whatever reason, scuba diving is full of ego. And most of us have been that guy, that person that thinks that they know everything there is to know about the dive site or critters or skills or whatever. All of us have been guilty of this one, but let's really try to rein that in. Check your ego, be open to listening to others and learning things. And if you do encounter one of those arrogant divers, just have compassion for them and be nice. My experience has been that the more I learn, the less I know. And I understand now that there's no shame in not knowing things. That got a little bit too deep, no? Now, back to our sponsor. Diveproof is a sweet little environmentally conscious company making durable logbooks that you don't have to worry about. I don't know about you, but I've had logbooks have an early death because of getting wet on the dive boat or having a dry bag that just fails. There are tons of designs to choose from, and you can even choose your own photo to make it unique to you, like this one. There are also a ton of options for log page styles. These can range from journal style, where you can really log a lot of information, or super compact for those of you dive professionals out there. Also, if you dive on a rebreather, they've got you covered. The packaging is all plastic free, even the tape, and the logbook itself is recyclable. That being said, these logbooks are so nice, you're not gonna want to get rid of them. They're gonna be keepsakes for a long time. If you want to get your hands on one of these sweet logbooks, use the code 15 asul for 15% off your order. Anyway, that about does it for me. If you like this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more videos from us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cool, 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 cool. I'm just gonna get super sandy today. Oh geez, I hope that didn't just get in my microphone. <laughs> it's fine, we're fine. It's all gonna be okay.